Dan Dan Board Game Man with this week's Top 5 Express Board Games Edition. Each episode, I'll give you a topic for the list and give you my picks for the top five of those games. These next two shows, I'm going to go back to our annual look into five and ten years ago. So we're going to have ten years ago of 2011 and five years ago of 2016. These were both amazingly great game years. I guess anything in the last ten years or so are going to have a lot of game years. But 2011 is kind of a special year in my heart because it's kind of the first year that I did a, a top 10 on our own show, the Geek All-Stars. So it, a lot of nostalgia there when I really started playing heavier, you know, just more games and heavier rotation. So this 2011, this is what we're going to go with this episode. 2011, man, it was so hard. Even up till the actual clicking record today, I, I just kept moving things around. So there are four games in a top 100 on this. Oh, well, not on this list, but in that were made in 2011 from BGG, the top four games in the top 100 of BGG, that from this year. But there are a ton of games that are uh, kind of on my also ran list. I'll let you know uh, a couple of those. So Eclipse, which is kind of a heavier, it's like, it's a heavier kind of 4X game, but it's also kind of another TI light, Twilight Imperium light that uh, we like to talk about. Trajan, another great Feld game. Uh, Village was from this year. Flashpoint Fire Rescue, which was an excellent game. This is kind of like, uh, kind of reminds me of Pandemic, but it's all about getting people out of a house, playing as firefighters, getting people out of a house. Kingdom Builder uh, from the designer of Dominion, uh, a great game. Elder Sign uh, from Richard Lanius, kind of a dice rolling take on Arkham Horror. Masters of Commerce and Panic on Wall Street, which I think is, uh, that is a great, there's kind of the same name for the same game, or two names for the same game. That's a great kind of hectic, frenetic uh, auction game for up to eight people. Nefarious, which is an unsung game about being kind of, almost like being Gru from uh, from Despicable Me. Uh, great game where uh, you're, you're playing cards and trying to outwit the other players and playing different uh, cards or different uh, actions from other people. Roll for it, which is a great light game. Also, the Penny Arcade, the Gamers versus Evil, which was a deck building game. I don't hear about that one too much more, but this is a very unsung deck building game from that year. Uh, there's also Eminent Domain, which way back when this was my very first game of the year for that for that year. Didn't really hit my top five this time, uh, just because I played and, and grown to love some of these other games a little bit more. But Eminent Domain, another great game, uh, and Hawaii, which was an absolutely amazing kind of tableau building game where you're kind of moving around the island of Hawaii, getting things into your tableau blow and just kind of making huts and uh, all sorts of, you know, gathering all sorts of great things. Real, real fun game. Those two are are both on Board Game Arena now. You can try them out. Uh, but also those are just uh, absolutely amazing games. So my top five, number five is a game called Last Will. This is by Vladimir Suchi, and I believe CGE puts it out currently. It's been put out by a lot of different games, but it's uh, put out by CGE. Two to five players has an excellent uh, expansion out there as well, but its sweet spot's probably in about three or four. Plays about an hour to an hour and a half, uh, ages 14 up, and it is kind of that medium weight kind of Euro game. Now, the best way I can explain Last Will is the the movie Brewster's Millions. You're, you've got about $100 million, and you're trying to get rid of all your money, and trying to be the first person to get rid of all your money. There's there's a whole bunch of actions and throughout the game you'll get more actions into your hand and you or more cards to use those actions to you know you're spending money on on houses and then not really doing the upkeep because you want to spend a lot of money and then you have to sell the house but you want it to be as dilapidated and nasty as possible so you get less money back so there's also different ways you can put on different events uh you you can in the expansion you can put on a wedding and then add uh caterers uh guests all sorts of different things but you're just doing a lot of different actions to get rid of all your money and boy is is it a blast? That is last will. Number four. Well, you hear me talking about this all the time. This is Sentinels of the Multiverse. Now, they just put out the Sentinels of the Multiverse Definitive Edition on Kickstarter uh, recently. Uh, as of this recording, I think it's still up there, so you might be able to check that one out. But Sentinels of the Multiverse, just a great co-op card game where you're playing as uh, the Sentinels of the Multiverse, you different uh, superhero teams, and you play this for, uh, you got to play this with three to five players. Uh, they list two to five, but I'm pretty sure you can only really play this with three to five. Uh, best with that three to four range. This was made by Greater Than Games, uh, Christopher Bedell, Paul Bender, and Adam Robitaro. Plays it about an hour to hour and a half. And it is, again, it's a lighter to medium weight. They list it as a medium weight game on BGG, but I think it's a lighter to medium weight. But it's just really cool how they created this universe and how you use the different superheroes, all play a little bit different. And you're basically just a, a deck. You're not, it's not a deck construction. It's, it's a deck manipulation or a deck usage game because as you're playing with the deck, each uh, superhero has its own deck. And as you're using that superhero, you're putting out different powers and other things that go along with that particular your power. Uh, and then there may be equipment in there. There may be other powers that use a little thing, maybe different uh, staves or, or other type of uh, armor you're using. Just all depends on which superhero you're using. But boy, 
What an absolutely great game. Check out the app if you uh, want to try that out before you buy something like this. But it is an amazingly great game. Obviously, it's on my top five, but Sentinels of the Multiverse. Number three, this kind of gets into Dan Love's Euros thing, and I also love Stefan Feld. Number three is the Castles of Burgundy. This is uh, about a 60 to 120 minute uh, medium weight Euro, maybe a medium to heavier weight Euro. Plays two to four players. Again, another one that's on BGA, and and, uh, I believe it's also on Yukata. You can find us on a lot of things, and also should be an app for it. But uh, it's just an absolutely amazing game. Plays in, I think, Aliyah and Ravensburger is who puts it out now. And and in Castles of Burgundy, you just roll two dice. You have a board in front of you that has all sorts of different colors. It's got a lot of hexes on there. Uh, and you're basically rolling the, uh, two dice and you're either taking, using a die to take a, a, a chit from the supply, from that number, or you're using one of the dice to put the chit into or the kind of the location onto your little board. Now, each one of the things do things when you put them on a board, uh, whether it just move you up in a turn order or you can sell some goods or you can actually make it so that there's different powers where when you take a, a, a number or when you use a number for taking a chit, you can use plus or minus one number, or you get more points from from using them, uh, you know, more points from taking certain uh, types of uh, location tiles, just all sorts of different things. But what's amazing about this game is how you can use one die and basically kind of chain four or five different uh, actions off of one die. Just gets absolutely amazing how you are able to do that. And just a really fun, cool game. It does take you a a game or two to really get used to it because it does, you know, there's a lot of things going on and there's a, you know, a typical failed they call, uh, there's a lot of points. You get points for just about everything and there are points everywhere so uh absolutely just a great great game uh if you want to check out again you go to bga or yukata to check out the the, the online implementation but castle of burgundy great great game airlines europe is my number two this is by alan moon you'll know him from ticket to ride this has gone by a couple of different names over the years where it, it went over it was called airlines or union pacific and it re-implements both of those games but airlines europe is a really cool kind of route building stock market game. So it's not necessarily route building, but you are kind of trying to connect different cities. Now, I always tell people that once you really like Ticket to Ride, you want to play Airlines Europe. Now, the difference is you're not necessarily trying to get your trains or the planes here Uh, through each one of the routes. So you're not putting out two or three there. You're just putting out kind of one train at a time, depending on the route, but you're using uh, the different route, you know, because you're taking claim over that you can go from city to city, but you are trying to get these longer routes made by having the one plane in each one of the routes. And each while you're getting stock for these planes, but you don't want to go too crazy with the stock of one of the different uh, plane uh, uh, companies, because if you go too crazy in one, Nobody else is going to help you there. And you really need the other players kind of getting in on there. So you can even have a little bit of a social aspect to it too. But you really got to watch what other people are doing with the trains that they're taking and make sure that you're not necessarily helping them or uh, trying to remember how much of each stock they've got. So you're, it's a, but it is still very, very light. So it is a very light to medium weight game. So it's, even though it's got that stock kind of feel to it, it's such a fun, really hard to explain how a, a stock market playing stock game is this much fun, but it is really good family way game because you're just kind of playing. And as you're getting train planes out and as you're getting the routes and as the stocks are going up and as you're helping other stocks to go up, you're just kind of watching the board develop and you're seeing how much you get. Then the end of the game comes, you add up how much money everybody has. And it's just, just an absolute blast. Again, two to five players. Best at about four players. It's going to take you about an hour and a half to play this one. And again, another medium weight. Of course, Alan Moon makes a lot of great, great medium family weight games uh, like Ticket to Ride and here, uh, Airlines Europe. Ah, such a great game. And the number one game from 2011. Again, we're going to hit in this very family weight game. King of Tokyo. Oh my God, what an absolutely fun game this is. You're you're basically playing monsters that are destroying Tokyo, but you're trying to take out the other monsters as well. So you're trying to be the last monster standing as you're attacking. So you've got dice rolling and kind of that Yahtzee mechanic where you're rolling the dice uh, two or three times, trying to see what you've got on the dice uh, faces, and you're either attacking other people or you're getting some points or you're getting some power-ups, getting some uh, life. The power-ups are great because you, uh, you know, as you spend what we call the Energon Cubes that you're acquiring, you spend those cubes on powers now you've got a power either a one-time thing or throughout the rest of the game now when you're rolling the dice or you're going into attack tokyo you go into tokyo and then you can attack the other players but every player that does do an attack attacks you and you're trying to hold tokyo till it gets back to your next time so you can get some extra points now that's really the best way to, to win the game or just getting the you know kind of the victory points other ways but boy it's hard because you got to stay in there and you're just getting constantly bombarded by other players but the good thing about it is Even if you lose, the game takes 20 to 25 minutes. You just play another game right away. 
Comes with a lot of different monsters. Over the years, there's been a lot of monsters. Promos that have come out. There's been a ton of expansions. And this is one game that's, uh, there's a standalone expansion called King of New York. Uh, this is one game that is a thousand times better. I really kind of liked it at first, but it's, man, it's, it's nowhere near as good as King of Tokyo. You can find King of Tokyo pretty much anywhere that you'll find big box, you know, any of the big box stores, Target, uh, Walmart, any place, any of uh, your friendly local game store is two to six players. Again, four to five players is going to be your sweet spot. 30 minutes to play a uh, family weight game. Kids play this one easy. It's a very lightweight game. Uh, this was made by Richard Garfield. You may remember him. He's the guy that made uh, magic the gathering. So it also put out by yellow games. So, Absolutely amazing game, King of Tokyo. I cannot stress enough. My family still plays it today. So let me go back over my top five real quick. You've got Last Will, or basically kind of Brewster's Millions. So you've got Last Mill and Last Will at five. Number four, Sentinels of the Multiverse. Number three, Castles of Burgundy. Number two, Airlines Europe. And number one, King of Tokyo. Those are some great, great games from 2011. Thanks for joining me this week on Top 5 Express Board Games Edition. If you have any questions or you want to give me your top five games of 2011, please feel free to comment on this episode on Majorspoilers.com or go to the Major Spoilers Discord, of course, to the site for some of some other great podcasts and content by Steven and the rest of the Major Spoilers crew. I'm Dan Dan, the Board Game Man. You can find me at Geek Jock Dan or on the Geek All Stars podcast, the Munchkin Land podcast here on the Major Spoilers Network, where I give a twice a month 10 to 15 minute board game news segment, uh, or as a contributor to TMSPM, where I do a board game segment with Scott and Brian. I'll be back soon with more board game top five goodness. Again, I'm going to be doing the top five of 2016 on the next show. So, hey, grab a new board game and have some fun with family and friends. This podcast is copyright 2021 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.